meet some of Africa's often forgotten residents. African penguins. But these young birds are being brought up by people, not by penguins. All around Cape Town, penguins are going hungry and being forced to abandon their chicks. The fish they rely on for food have shifted to the other side of the Cape. And the penguins haven't followed them. Over the last century, their numbers have dropped by 99%. And experts now warn that Africa's only penguins could be extinct within 10 years. But there is hope. These penguins just need a new home. Yet relocating penguins is a tricky business. You can't pack up and move an entire colony. To get thousands of penguins hundreds of miles up the coast, you need to think big. And you need to think outside the box. We've been playing around with this idea for quite a few years now. What you want to do is try and get inside the heads of penguins, see the world from a penguin's point of view. It's really hard to say what will happen for sure, but what is certain is that we need to act now if we want to try and save the species at all. Christina Hagen knows that time is running out for the African penguin. So she's decided to take on a radical new project creating a brand new colony, a new home for Cape Town's thousands of penguins. We haven't tried to establish new colonies before. This will be a world first for the African penguin. And it's quite scary in a way, but it's also quite exciting, the fact that it hasn't been done before. How do you persuade completely wild penguins to relocate hundreds of miles? What penguins look for in a place is other penguins. So creating a new colony entirely from scratch isn't easy. To pull this off, Christina's going to have to get creative. And to do that, she needs help. I actually just put out a, a call on Facebook um, asking Facebook followers on BirdLife South Africa's page if they knew of anyone who could assist. And then my girlfriend looked at this post and she's like, listen, Rolf, uh, I know you know some of this stuff. He had some great ideas and was really enthusiastic. And we just talked about it a bit and came up with, with the idea of, of the cement decoys. Penguins breed in colonies and are more likely to establish one if there are already other penguins around. We're going to basically try and trick the penguins into thinking there's already a colony at the site. And using data from GPS tracking, Christina thinks she's found the right place. The penguins are currently swimming hundreds of miles round the Cape to find fish. So if they spot Christina's colony while they're there, she hopes they'll opt to stay instead of heading back to Cape Town. We'll use decoys, so lifelike models of penguins, and also we'll play penguin calls broadcast on speakers so that it looks and sounds like, like a penguin colony. The stage is set on this stretch of coastline for some serious penguin trickery. But to carry out her plan, Christina needs penguins. So Rolf's going to make her some. I'm not a conservationist, but the penguins don't need to die before we do something. And we mustn't shoot down these crazy ideas because they might just be the only way we're going to save them. So this is the space where I create the, the penguins. Um, yeah, so it's, it's going quite well. Creating an illusion convincing enough to fool penguins is no mean feat. So then from there on I just add the clay 
and then sculpt, sculpt, sculpt until it's finished. Well, until I show it to you and yes. you say it's good yeah. enough. If I can create a colony exactly the same, we have better chances of establishing a new colony. Because you can fool them on so many different ways. I made them fatter to feel like they're in a healthy ocean with a lot of fish and krill to eat. And I've made them sleepy. So, I mean, if you arrive somewhere and there's lots of people that <laughs> ate a lot and lying around, you think it's a good place, you know? You want to stay there. It's the two things that they want. They want safety and food. And hopefully I've captured that in the penguins. I might even just change its head a bit, so, you know, just a forward sculpture is always a bit boring. Uh, we can create more beauty. From a, a penguin's point of view, they don't need to be super realistic and super detailed, but I think Rolf just couldn't contain his artist's eye for detail. And they actually look up a bit when they completely chilled out. It's been fantastic working with Rolf. He has a, a different way of seeing things and he, he likes to work on the interface between science and art. And I think it's been great that he's been able to make something that's not just aesthetically nice to look at, but also something that's really going to help the conservation status of a species. That way, I can kind of pre-sculpt this thing in my mind and I get all the proportions perfect. Those sculptures will be loaded with so much concepts and ideas and meaning. I mean, no, that's, that's the kind of meaning that I want to put in sculptures. You know, it had a real influence. And it's the first project that I do where science and art really meet. And I'm very glad that Christina, like, trusted me. The team have decided to put Rolf's handiwork to the test. Stony Point is an established penguin colony 50 miles from Cape Town. And the perfect place to see how the decoys go down among real penguins. No one's done this before with decoys and African penguins. Decoys have been used very successfully in other seabird species, so we have an idea that they'll work, but we, we don't really know. With penguins arriving, and two of Rolf's new residents in position, one member of the colony peers cautiously from the sidelines. The penguins seem hesitant about their new neighbors. Barely a second glance. Plans for the penguins to interact with the decoys don't seem to be working. They walk around them for many minutes and then run off in complete <laughs> disillusion, shaking their heads. But then, the mysterious new arrivals start to attract a bit of a crowd. It's a mixed reaction. There's no knowing for sure if the penguins are falling for it. But then along comes one penguin with a completely new response. It looks around like, who's watching me? You know, why am I doing this? And it was really funny. The penguin kind of looked confused about whether it should be lying there or not. You could see it's so confused and he'd eventually lie down and it reenacted what the decoy did. And that's what you want. You want them to be fooled that it's real animals, that there's more of them 
that it's safe, that they can nest, that they can lie down. And that they are completely fooled by them. Rolf's craftsmanship has done the trick. The penguins have taken the bait. There's still a long way to go, but for Christina, this is a good start. If this project is successful, it'll be a great legacy. Penguins that weren't there but are now because of something that we did to help them. I think it would be one of my career highlights. It's so much more rewarding for me than just normal putting up something in a gallery space for a select few to look at. And I think now that I've experienced this, it's going to be really hard to go back to just making a, an object that's going to be in some rich guy's home. What's important now is conservation and our relationship with nature. So yes, now I will be yeah, <laughs> very, very happy. I'm already very happy that we came this far. This journey is only just beginning, but in a novel new marrying of art and science, Christina and Rolf have helped give Africa's beloved penguins a brighter future.